For reasons that utterly escape everyone involved, you're listening to a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. Here are your hosts, Gabe Howard and Michelle Hammer. Hello, everybody. My name is Gabe Howard, and I live with bipolar disorder. Hi, I'm Michelle Hammer, and I have schizophrenia. And you're listening to a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast, and it is time once again to play... Two Truths and a Lie. And the twist this month is the depression edition. But we're not going to make it sad. We're going to make it glad. We're going to be glad about depression? No, I was just trying to make it like that commercial. But we're going to share two truths and one lie about depression because that's what we're playing. So your description of what we're doing is also the title of what we're doing. So you're defining the word with the word. You know what? I'm a smart girl, Gabe. I went to college. Yeah, you, you? went to college you? on an athletic Did you? Co- you went on an athletic scholarship. No, I did not. That then is you got not hit true. in the head with a lacrosse. Th- what? Wait, what does lacrosse played with? Oh my God, I can't even. I, it, a football, Gabe. A football. Then why don't they just call it? D- d- Michelle, you go first. Okay. I wanted to go with a really depressing story first. So in college, one is required to attend class. But when you are depressed, you don't want to attend class. So sometimes, you know, being an art major like I was, I would go to art class because that's fun. Yeah, you get to draw fun. Well, was it? Well, it was fun until your teacher told you that your art doesn't look good or whatever. I digress. But there'd be times where I'd just be in my bed like, I'm not going to class. I'm sad. I'm not going to class. I'm just, I, I don't want to go to class. And my roommates would come in my room like, hey, like you have class right now. Like, why aren't you going? And I'm like, I just don't want to go. I don't feel good. I don't want to take these stupid liberal arts classes. Like, why do I have to take government? I don't want to take government. That has nothing to do with me being an art major or anything. Government is just, like, not a class I want to take, which I do realize is a really stupid thing to say, considering government is very important. But I, like, wouldn't go to class because I was depressed. So, like, how does one pass classes when you don't go to class when you're depressed? You be an athlete. Uh, that doesn't make you pass classes. Oh, you should be a football player then. Oneonta didn't have a football team. Wow. Anyway, but basically my story is, is that many times in college, I would just not go to class because I was depressed. I think that's actually pretty common in college when you're a freshman or, you know, you just start college and you're like, I don't want to go to class. I'm sad. I hate this class. I'm not even doing well in class. I don't want to go. And then you get your, you know, your report card and you're like, oh, maybe I should have gone to class a little bit more. So your story that you took that long to tell is didn't go to class because I was depressed. Yeah, but I wanted to elaborate the story because my roommates would come in my room and say, I will drive you to class. Just go. And I'd be like, no, no, like I'm sore from practice. I need to lie down. They'd be like, I'll drive you there. You don't even have to drive yourself. No. um... This is some Gabe level stretching out. (laughs) You've got... Didn't go to class because I was depressed. And you've got several minutes on it. I I am proud of you, Michelle. I have rubbed off on you. (laughs) So we're going to call that didn't go to class due to depression. That's a great story. I loved it. I hope everybody listening loved that story. Yes, here is my first story. And I swear to God, this is true. I wrote it down. I didn't go to class because I was depressed. I I never went to college, but when I was in high school, I would be manic and I would stay up for days at a time. Uh, I'd be up all night. I'd be, you know, uh, lively. I'd have friends over. I'd be on my computer. I'd be playing. I'd be, you you know, just, yeah! Uh, And then I would crash. And it, it, it often seemed, at least to my parents' perspective, and this probably holds up, that I would crash when it was time to go to school. So my parents would see you know, hey, Gabe was up all weekend and now it's Monday, Tuesday. He doesn't want to go to school. So this is clearly the consequence of staying up. We learned years later that that's what mania and depression is. But I was too depressed to get up and go to school. But my parents thought that it was because I stayed up all weekend. So my father once pounded on my bedroom door and I knew that this was going to happen. So I had locked the bedroom door So my father pounded so much to get me up that he actually broke the door. And then for the rest of my life, I never had a door that locked when we lived in that house. But I call that story, 
too depressed to go to class two. So yours can be not go to class due to depression one. Well, at least we have those things in common, Gabe. We have a lot in common. Yeah, I know. I'm only like a six foot four ginger. Aww. You're like a five foot one schizo. I'm five four. But anyway, we're going to go on to my next story. And it is a story about how a preacher saved my life. That's right. You heard it correct, people. A preacher saved my life. You're Jewish. It would have been a rabbi. No, it was a preacher. This one's the lie. No. Listen to the story, Gabe. Okay. End of lacrosse year. We have a dinner. I'm not feeling good at this dinner. I don't like that I'm going into my last year of senior year. I'm not having fun. We're voting for captains. We're getting these awards. And I'm like, at the, I'm going home after this dinner, and I am just going to kill myself after this dinner. We, we were trying to vote for captains. I even wrote on the note, instead of voting for captains, I wrote goodbye. That was my suicide note. And I handed it in, and then I just walked out of the restaurant to my car. And on my car, I see a, a card. And I'm like, what is this card? What is this? Who put a card on my car? And I pick it up, and it's like a traveler's prayer card that said something from, like, quoting the Bible of the Christians that I don't know. And I'm like, what is this? And then I flip it over, and it says... Sorry I hit your car, here's my number. And I was like, what? And then I look at my driver's side back door, and it's crushed. And I'm like, oh my god, somebody hit my car. I take the card that has the, the traveler's prayer card, go back into the restaurant, go up to my coach and assistant coach and say, what do I do with this? And they go, did you write goodbye on a car on one of the voting things? And I go, no. What do I do with this? And they go, what's this? And they flip it over like, traveler's prayer? What is what? I'm like, no, the other side. I'm like, somebody hit my car. Somebody hit my car. And they go, oh, uh, call the police. I'm like, I, should I call the police? And they're like, yeah. Uh, I'm like, okay. So I go back outside. I'm waiting by my car and I called the police. And they said, yeah, okay. The guy actually called in that he hit your car. And we're going to call him now to bring him back. So I'm just waiting outside my car. Everybody doesn't know what I'm doing. They're driving out and they're like, what are you doing right now? And I'm like, somebody hit my car. I have to wait for the cops. Everybody just thought that I was just being a bitch and that I was in a bad mood. But really, my plan was to go home and die. But this preacher got in my way by hitting my car. So I'm waiting by my car. The cop shows up and I'm, he's talking to me. And then the, the, guy, the preacher guy with his car shows up and I, he's like, he's over there. I'm like, I don't want to talk to him at all. You talk to him. I need to go home and take my medicine. And he, the cop's like, what's your medicine for? I'm like, because it makes me not freak out. So he's talking to the preacher. I found out the preacher is driving a rental car from Canada. But then I just go home and I ended up not fulfilling my plan of trying to kill myself because pretty much it got thwarted by the preacher that hit my car. So if he had not hit my car and put this whole big wrench in my plan, I could have been dead. So a preacher saved my life. So just to make sure I understand, the only guy who could ever reach you was the son of a preacher man. There was no son of a preacher man. Yes, he was. He was a preacher. He was a, he was a preacher from Pennsylvania driving a rental car from Canada. And he backed up into my car. We will call that story Preacher Saved Michelle's Life. Preacher Saved My Life. Crush my door. But save my life. My second story is also about suicide. I swear to God, I'm not copying you. It's just when you're dealing with depression, suicidality is going to come up. When I was at my worst and I was I was planning my death, I was, I was planning on dying. I did a bunch of weird things. One, I rented an apartment. Uh, I wanted to kill myself in an apartment so I didn't stigmatize the property of my house because I wanted to make sure that it could get sold and that the money could be distributed to my family. Along those same lines, I had a life insurance policy, and the life insurance policy was three times my annual income, which, for those playing along at home, was pretty high back then. And I wanted to ensure that this money did some good. I, I had people that I wanted to leave it to. Uh, Taylor, who is the, the father of Lenny, who I call my loophole granddaughter, I wanted to make sure that he got some money. I had nieces and nephews, my, my parents. Uh, grandparents, because I, I just, I really thought that the only good that I could do was just to give this money away. Um, and it was, a, it was a sizable amount. But I had heard somewhere that if you died by suicide, they weren't going to pay. Insurance companies didn't have to pay. 
so in in my depressed state planning my suicide i called the insurance company and i asked them if they paid off on suicide and the lady said well let me check and she saw that i had the plan for almost four years you know, and she said, yes, it, there's only an 18 month rider that it doesn't pay. So yes, uh, if, if you die by suicide, it will pay off. And I said, okay. And she said, do you have any other questions? And I said, no. And then she had me take a customer service thing online, which I did. And I, I gave her all fives. So my second story is called, called insurance company to ensure payoff after my suicide. This woman didn't tell you to call the doctor. No, they just handled it like it was nothing. She answered all of my questions. She asked if she did everything right. And I took a little survey and it got disconnected. And I took the paperwork that I had. And um, my plan was to leave all of this on the kitchen table so that, you know, after I died and my family was relieved of me, because I, I, I believe that they would just be so relieved that I was dead, that they would just want me to be organized so that they could get it all of my money because that's all I thought that I was good for. Okay, either this story is not true or this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard that that woman would like not help you at all and say, oh yeah, if you die by suicide, they still get the money. Like when, I feel like that's the biggest red flag I've ever heard in my life. Well, only time will tell, Michelle. So as it stands right now, we have not go to class due to depression, one, versus too depressed for school, two. And preacher saves Michelle's life versus called insurance company to ensure payoff after suicide. So this third story gets a little intense. A little intense. Oh, it gets intense it now, gets intense. It? Okay, so one night uh, I overdosed on my medication and I fell asleep, passed out. It's the next day, I'm in my bed going, what did I do? Oh God, I'm all, all so horrible. But then there's a ruckus. There's just a ruckus. And I hear, there's people with guns outside. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Why is there guns outside? I think uh, somebody's coming after me because somebody found out something that I tried to die. But really, we look out the window, they were pointing guns everywhere, yelling, get back in the house. The SWAT team is in front of my neighbor's house. You would think a SWAT team would surround an entire house. No, the SWAT team with guns, full armor, shields, and everything is outside my neighbor's house. And they're yelling through like those megaphone things, come out of the house, come out of the house, we know you're in there. We see a window open on the side, a girl climbs out of the window, jumps from the second story to the ground, and just runs. And we open the window and my roommate Kate goes, she ran that way. And then the SWAT team starts running that way and they didn't catch her. We go outside after the whole thing is over and the SWAT team says to us, wow, that was some jump, we couldn't get her. So basically I had tried to kill myself, but was awoken the next day alive to experience this weird scenario of a heroin dealer jumping out of a window to run away from the SWAT team. It's not really about depression, but I did try to die the night before, and I thought that the cops were there for me when they weren't. They were there for the heroin dealer next door. Did you overdose on purpose or accidentally? Oh, on purpose. But you passed out and just woke up fine, except that there was... Well, I woke up and I was having crazy heart palpitations, and I just laid in my bed until I could, like, move again. And then, like... I started hearing, there's cops outside, there's cops outside. I thought they were for me, so I started freaking out. When my roommate was like, dude, he's aiming a gun at us. Because they were aiming like, get back inside, close your windows. That's why we were looking at the side window, where we saw the girl open up the window and jump from the second story. We're going to call that overdosed death, taxes, and guns. What's taxes have to do? Oh, taxes pay the SWAT team. Whenever there's overdose, death, and guns, taxes are going to be nearby. <laughs> I, I just, a SWAT, why would a SWAT team not surround a house? Listen, I don't understand how SWAT teams work. The bigger question is if they didn't surround the house, why did the guy jump out the front? The guy jumped out the side window to run that away. That makes a lot more sense. To run away. She ran away. How did, you, how did you see him from your vantage point? No, the side window. Because yeah, they, they didn't want to. How did you wanna... see the side window? Because we all were looking out the side window. So he jumped above you? No, it was a girl. We were next door neighbors. Oh. 
And you remember all this even though you were overdosed. Oh, yeah. Because we talked about it forever. That's fair, right? Because I told Mary, because Kate, who yelled, she ran that way. I was like, that bitty is going to come after you. She's going to know you did that and you better watch out because she knows that you yelled at the SWAT team where she was. Because people had been, like, doing heroin in, like, the Friendly's bathroom, which was, like, the next next building over. Because, like, they were, like, they were finding hypodermic needles in the bathroom at Friendly's. And they were, like, where are people getting heroin from? And apparently this girl, our neighbor, was a heroin dealer and they set the SWAT team. Hey, hey, hey. It's time to hear from our sponsor. We'll be right back. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp.com. Secure, convenient, and affordable online counseling. All counselors are licensed, accredited professionals. Anything you share is confidential. Schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist whenever you feel it's needed. A month of online therapy often costs less than a single traditional face-to-face session. Go to betterhelp.com forward slash psych central and experience seven days of free therapy to see if online counseling is right for you. Betterhelp.com forward slash psych central. Welcome back to Two Truths and a Lie. Let's hear the next story. My story to round out the third round of Two Truths and a Lie has to do with depression and passive suicidality. Um, For for those who don't know, there's obviously active suicidality. It's where you you actively try to harm yourself. You, You know, this is... Uh, we we all we all know how people kill themselves stereotypically in movies with you know guns or hanging or jumping off various things um but there's passive suicide it's where you take unnecessary risks you know that they could turn out poorly you just don't care but the outcome isn't guaranteed and that, that's kind of where my story comes in I, I i was so depressed and i had the the whiplash effect of mania depression mania depression and I, I was on the depression downswing and I had just had a bender um, at a strip club and I'd been asleep for a while and I just, I didn't want to go home, but the the owner was tossing me out and I got in my car. I didn't wear a seatbelt. It was winter and I just drove home as fast as I could. And, and when I say as fast as I could, I mean, I, I didn't stop for stoplights. I ran through intersections without looking left or right. I didn't pay attention to traffic laws or basic human safety. I I could have killed somebody. I could have gotten into a car accident and really hurt somebody. And the fact that I wasn't wearing my seatbelt or paying attention to basic speed limits or safety protocols uh, meant that if I would have, you know, plowed into a car head on or lost control because of, you know, winter conditions, I, I really could have hit a pole and ejected myself from the car and killed myself in this way. I just didn't care. I want to be clear, I I didn't get in an accident. I, I drove the whole half an hour home, pulled into the driveway, and no doubt got in a fight with my wife. But that's that's what happened. And I, I did this often, but How old were you? I would have been twenty-four. It it was it was about it was the year before before my wife left me and I was ultimately admitted to the hospital. But I just took incredible risks when it came to driver safety, uh, because uh, I really didn't care if I wrecked and died and I wasn't able to think outside of myself. So it didn't occur to me that I could hurt somebody else. So I wanted to get in a car accident and die because it absolved me. Then I would just die in a car accident. Whereas if I killed myself, I'd have to explain to people again, this is how my brain worked. I'd have to explain to people why I died. But if I died by accident, then I'm just, I'm just free. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I could relate to that a lot. I feel like I had a lot of those feelings too. Like walking home at night, I'd be like, I wish somebody would just mug me so they could kill me and just die. Yeah. That's, it it was just a lot of unnecessary risks surrounding me and my vehicle. Um, I am going to call that car crash temptation. So Michelle, after three rounds, it's time for the Q and A portion. So to remind everybody, We have not go to classes due to depression, Michelle version, too depressed for school, Gabe version. The second round is preacher saved Michelle's life versus called insurance company to ensure payoff after suicide. And then the final round was overdose, death, taxes, and guns, which is Michelle's story versus car crash temptation, which is Gabe's stories. Uh, As always, I will allow you to ask the first question to try to tease out which is the truth and which is a lie. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so your dad, you said, broke your door. Why did you never fix your door? I don't know how to fix anything. 
How did it break? Did it break on the hinges? Did the hinges break or did the door have a hole in it? He broke the door frame. Oh, the door frame. I, I, I think that it broke by pounding on it. He just pounded on the door until it gave in. Okay. And then the suicide phone call uh, insurance. So how much money were you going to get? Three times my annual salary. And why did you rate the woman five stars? She answered all of my questions and she did a good job. I was singularly minded. I, I only ha I just needed answers to this question because I, I wanted to make sure that it was clear. My other question is, where was that covered in the contract? Because I had the contract because, you know, it was this was way back when when things still came in paper. So they had mailed me the contract that I kept in my um, filing cabinet so that it could be accessed by my wife. That was the, the plan. But I wanted to leave it out so that whomever handled my estate after I was dead had it. Okay, and then in your last story, how fast were you driving? Oh, I had, at that time I was driving, uh, uh, it was a, a, a Ford, but it had a V6 engine, and uh, I, I was driving as fast as I could, but I, I went over 100 miles an hour routinely. Uh, as you know, you've driven with me, Michelle. Yes, I have. You, so, yeah, yeah, that's why I was asking you that question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's harrowing. Harrowing? Harrowing. Okay, now you ask me questions. You didn't go to class because you were depressed. Well, I didn't want to go to class because I thought they were so stupid, those stupid liberal arts classes. I just want you to know that if you think that's the lie, it's not. I guarantee that you were too depressed to go to class at some point. So just in case you think that's the lie, you are a liar. That's not the lie. So my next question is, Preacher saved Michelle's life. Yes. So... You were planning on going home and ending your life, but somebody damaged your car and you waited around for the police report? I waited. I had to call the police to find Why? out what happened. And they said Why? the guy called Why? in. Because he hit my car. Why? But what do you care? Insurance, blah, blah, blah. You're not going to be around. I don't know. I guess I was thinking of the future. But that's my point. You weren't thinking of the future. I think that one's the lie. Is that your guess? That is my guess. You're wrong. Really? You are wrong. This is actually this 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 is this is how messed up a suicidal brain is. Because as you said, you were planning on going home and ending your life. But then you had to stay there and take care of this for the future. Those two things are mutually exclusive. Because if Michelle Hammer is dead, the future is irrelevant and this is not your problem. But for some reason, you still considered it to be your problem even though your plan was to go home and die. That's messed up thinking. I, I, I'm thankful that it happened because now I get to host a podcast with a crazy schizo. But there, there, you, you do recognize how messed I see up the that is. I see the contradiction in there, and that makes a lot of sense. But I, I don't know how to explain it because it does make no sense. Why would I want to fix my car? But I did. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's my guess, and clearly I have got it wrong. But... You have not won yet because now you have to figure out which one is the lie. The second one. Called insurance company to insure payoff after suicide? Yeah. 100% true story. Damn it. It happened exactly like that too. I thought Think it might be true too, but I just I just was like, how could this woman not like refer you to a suicide hotline? Nothing. They said nothing. I just can't believe that. I just thought that woman, I just couldn't believe that a woman would be that dumb. Nothing. They just answered all of the questions and, and did everything. I'm in, in that person's defense. I am sure that I sounded not emotional. I wasn't crying. I sounded very professional. I had all of my questions. I told her I had the contracts. I was trying to outline this for, I mean, I just, I, you know how you said that even though you were feeling suicidal, you still wanted to take care of your car. Yeah. Well, I, I sounded very professional, mature, and just trying to handle my business. Why would somebody th equate that with suicide? It shows how little we understand about suicide. We think that everybody who is suicidal looks, acts, and sounds a certain way. In reality, they don't. It's very true. They don't. All right, so the game is still live. Is your first I could one still a lie? win. The first one's a lie. Your dad did break down your door. Nope, dad broke down the door. Damn it! Yeah, I, I feel the need to defend my father here. He was pounding on the door, and I'm sure the door just gave. I, I, I don't think that my father maliciously kicked in the door in some sort of... But, you know, this was a, a cheap door in a basement, and he was pounding on it, and it just it just finally gave in. And, you know, I, I was refusing to get up. And, I'll, I'll, you know, my, my dad has a bit of a temper problem. I'm not going to 
I'm not gonna mm-hmm. lie. He, uh, but I, you know, these these doors they don't they don't hold up well. They're just these hollow core doors, and the uh, the the frame gave, and once it was in, and he never fixed it. <laughs> I, I I think he took the handle off. To be honest, I was never able to shut and lock my door ever again. Yeah, see, I thought the third one might be true because it does seem reasonable to do something like that when you are suicidal, and I know that you can drive really fast, so that's why I thought that was true. I could, like, see that happening. And this is why I picked that story. This, 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 I took a lot of unnecessary risks, a lot of unnecessary risks. I did a lot of drugs. I didn't bother to check needles. I, I just, just on and on and on. I, I, I can't begin to tell you I jumped off a roof. But I had a family member die in a car accident. And that, even in my bipolar, manic, depressed, messed up brain, I always remembered my aunt who died in a car accident. And and it made me respect cars very much. Ah. Uh, I'm I'm not saying that I didn't drive fast. Of course I speed. But I I never took unnecessary risks uh, with my car, outside of being a teenager and stupid. But... That never would have occurred to me because in my family, we have a phrase that if my aunt wore her seatbelt, maybe she'd still be alive. Mm. My, my, my parents pounded that into my brain. We always wore our seatbelts. My, my father's a truck driver. He pounded into our brains how easy it is to hurt somebody with a vehicle. And as messed up as I was, I, I, I could never get over that training. It, okay. it, was, it was just innate. You haven't guessed my lie yet. I think that your lie is too depressed to go to class. It is. Yeah, that's bullshit. I it's guarantee not, no. it's I bullshit. Always it's bullshit. Went to class. I always went to class. I never missed a class. Never missed a class. Uh. Unless I was excused for being in the hospital. True. So this this begs the question. And you think I would ever go, oh, my leg hurts from practice. I don't want to go to class today. I would never do that. This begs the question. Did they catch the heroin chick? I have no idea if they caught her. Did you like? I don't know. We didn't look it up in the news. I I have no idea. What's funny is that when she jumped from the second story, she uh, left a flip flop. She lost one of her flip flops. So then we took the flip flop and we had it in our house for like a really long time, like just to have the flip flop. And one day, my roommate Wendy was like, "Whose flip flop is this?" We're like, "Oh no, that's the heroin dealer's flip flop." And she's like, "Why do we have this?" And I'm like, "Just throw it out." That is hilarious. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. My name is Gabe Howard, and with me, as always, is Michelle Hammer. You need to go to store.psychcentral.com and buy our Define Normal shirt. It helps keep the lights on and allows Michelle to buy a second flip-flop. Please review us on all of your favorite podcast players, and we will see you next week. My leg hurts. You've been listening to a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. If you love this episode, don't keep it to yourself. Head over to iTunes or your preferred podcast app to subscribe, rate, and review. To work with Gabe, go to GabeHoward.com. To work with Michelle, go to Schizophrenic.nyc. For free mental health resources and online support groups, head over to PsychCentral.com. The show's official website is psychcentral.com slash BSP. You can email us at show at psychcentral.com. Thank you for listening and share widely.